G'day and welcome back to my channel. Well, the slippery schlepper has leapt ahead in leaps and bounds. Let me tell you, there's a lot going on. I've got a little snarly mouth on it now too. So I will show you now how I detailed the tools, got them all on and the life rings, and also how I did the track links. And there's a lot of work involved in those things. It always seems like, you know, these tiny little things take forever to do. But I think it's worth doing because the detail you get from getting those little parts done correctly and how interesting they are to the eye is really worth it. So getting your track links looking realistic and making sure all your tools and all your accessories um, scrub up nicely, it's worth it. All right, let's get on with it. I've blocked in the colors here for the, um, the tools and um, my little life preservers there. I've also got some rear view mirrors and I've got some windscreen wipers and they've been um, they've been painted the light blue color of the camo which is in the spots. The um, preservers were painted in orange. I used to use my liquid mask. I've um, shown that before. That's um, a little liquid mask. This stuff's great. Micro mask. And um, I just masked out the uh, little clampy bits. In fact, all the little clampy bits, I mean the little, you know, the, the, the clamps and the clips, they've all got to be painted the um, either the dark or the light camo colour. I've got to figure out where they sit and paint them to match. The ones on the top, those tools, they'll all have the dark camo colour, which is sort of a, a very much a black blue. And then the sky, sort of, or the light blue, that'll, um, that'll go where it needs to go. Um, so they're basically ready to go, except they look kind of cartoonish. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some dry brushing tricks. And although I've painted using a darker brown to, um, to base in there, and I've got my metallic paint, I'm going to go lighter. So I'll go with a lighter brown. I've used, here I've used gunmetal, so I'll go with silver. And I'll, I'll basically dry brush on there to get some effects. Whoops, just about lost life preserver. My life preservers, well, what I did there is... I'd um, primed everything in Stoner as grey and I'd hand painted on a bit of life colour to start with the orange and it really went on splodgy and it didn't go on very even and I was quite disappointed. So I actually got out some Ataka, and see if I can find it, it's over here somewhere. I got some Ataka uh, paint out and airbrushed. Just did, uh, that's where I masked and I gently airbrushed in to get a smoother look. But it also gave me underneath is kind of like a pre shading. And that's good, because I did not want them perfect. I don't want this to look like a cartoon. I want it to look used, but not too used. Maintained, you know? Maintained. So um, there we go. That's the uh, that's that light blue colour, which was a tarker as well. And I've been able to hand brush all of these, just thinning with a little bit of water. And even airbrushing on the tarker. This time I, I thin with water. I've used their thinner, but I have mixed results with it. Um, sometimes it's good, and sometimes it tends to sort of stick. It's a pretty hot day here today. It's, it's over 30 degrees outside. It's only 25 here inside with the air conditioning, but it's very dry in here with the air conditioning. So, um, yeah, I just thin with water today. Time to basically 50-50. Water and uh, taka work beautifully. So there you go. All right, well, I'm going to basically dry brush these and get some effects, and then I'll also show you um, what I've done with the track links. Now the effect I'm getting with this dry brushing is very subtle. It'll uh, it'll look good in close-ups, and I'll show you some of those. But if you don't believe me, the paint's going on. Have my finger. I'll, I'll, I'll pick a clean finger here, right? And so brushing. Oops. I want to do this without breaking everything. Brushing away. I'm only. Can you see? It? Oh. There. It's probably too dry now, but believe me, I've got, you can see I've got um, a little bit of brown on my fingers there, and that is from the dry brushing, and what it's effectively done is just put a, a shiny edge along the top there, which gives a more three-dimensional, less flat cartoon look to um, to these, and, and breaks them up a bit. You can even use different colours and then model it through if you want to get a bit more of a variation. So that's um, that's one way to, to break things up and give, just give them a little bit of life, it's that tiny bit of dry brushing. All right, I'm going to do the same with um, with um, a bit of a lighter colour on the um, where I've got all the gun metal, 
and then I'm going to put dark wash through, which will then make everything pop out. So I'll get on with that. A little bit of competition here from kookaburras, I don't know if you can hear them. But um, okay, I've got my dry brushing on. I'm going to do the clamps first before I do that wash. So I've got my bit of black grey that I used um, before. And I've got a uh, little SMS, a little sable brush here, and it's 2 zero. So um, we should be able to pick those out fairly easily. Now, despite the myth that you need a little brush to do a um, fine detail painting, I could probably do this with a 1 or a 0, really. It's all about the point and it's all about the, the way your brush goes. But this one, this one is rather nice and it's nice and easy to use. Now I need my little uh, black grey container that I'd already mixed up the, uh, the paint in, or at least a colour like it. I've got a whole lot of these there for uh, salads. Yes, basically knock up a salad and, uh, well you buy them and they have a little thing for the, um, the vinaigrette or whatever. So I'm just going to go through and um, just gently put a little bit of um, paint on these. And I'm not going to worry too much because the A, there's grey on there, which is good. And B, the, um, the wash is going to do a bit of work as well. So it's, it's very simple detail painting. It doesn't require too much cleverness on my part. And those will... Uh, I've got bloody silver paint here. Look at that. I've got silver paint all over my fingers. Uh, those will just make that blend in a bit better. With the um, oh, the cows are going off now. It's you know, it's Harry's farm, I tell you, old Harry's farm. Okay, I'll get on with this and um, get those done. We'll throw a wash on and then we'll show you what I'm doing with the track legs. Now you see the tools are starting to take shape. I've got uh, all the little clasps and buckles and things, they're all painted the um, the dark color. I've got another little one in here, I've forgotten. Okay. And, um, and they're not too bad. I mean, you're, you're looking fairly close. By the time they're on the model with, with a bit more washing and some chipping and a few other things, it's all going to blend in. You can get away with a lot. You really don't have to panic. And the whole time I'm painting, even though I look steady, um, I'm not that steady when I'm sort of in the air, right? That's me in the air. If I rest my hand on something, right, I'm so much better. And that's been the trick. I've shown this in the other videos. It's my trick all the time. I'm holding the part with a hand on the bench and I'm holding the bright brush with my hand on the bench. So I've basically solving the problem of all my wobbliness. So if you kind of wobble and think, how do I get things, how do I paint them straight? Rest your hand and rest the subject. Don't try and paint in the air. Like, Here's your thing in the air, this hand's wobbling. Here's your brush and that's wobbling. Look, unless you've got rock steady hands, that is not going to happen. I can't do it. But if I rest my hand and I rest this hand, there's very little movement, okay? It's probably something you already know. Harry, in any way, you're telling us this stuff. We know all this stuff, or do you? Maybe some people don't. So I'm just passing on how I cope, because sometimes people go, oh, you, you've got rock steady hands. I don't. My hands wobble and shake and everything from the gout. Now, moving on. I've got a couple of washes here. I have a couple of these little game washes I'm going to use. I've got lots of washes, but these I've just grabbed because they suit exactly my need. I have basically an umber bar, a wash, um, umber bush, umber wash. What's a number bus? Um, yeah, a number seven bus is what runs you over. Now, um, that's a brown wash, which is going to go on the wood. We'll give it a little bit of wash. It'll just sort of dwell in the edges and everything. And then we've got a little bit of black here, which will just pop anywhere we can find detail on the, um, the metal parts, which have had gun metal, and then they've been dry brushed with a little bit of silver. So everything's coming together rather nicely. I'll even put a little bit on my life rings. Now, with those, I detailed the clasps with the, um, the black blue, and then I used a very light, what is it, camouflage Siri, blum, 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 whatever that is. It's, it's a really light tan colour, which I reckon looks like rope, which is going to be the same colour that my, um, my cotton rope is going to get stained to. So this should all look rather nice. So here we go, I'm going to add some washes to this.
there's the final result of the wash and it's grubbed up my rings a bit that's fine a little bit of the brown on there is um, oops knocking everything flying as usual a little bit of a uh, little bit of brown and spodginess I, I mean I wanted the even coat of orange so that then I could work and dirty them up I know it's kind of reverse logic but you can see how details have popped out there on my um, my little gaff and uh, look at the anchor look at the nice effects I've got the anchor I literally grunge wash that stuff on uh, and then work it to sort of see if I can get some unusual effects so I'm getting actually more yes it's running into crevices and cracks and accentuating details but I also let it basically do its thing so like on the anchor I've got grubby little marks and things happening and on the um, the spade here with its its metal class I wasn't sure if that was supposed to be the dark blue color or not but I left it all metal I just wanted the clamps on either side the um, the blue color of the, the body so I've got little effects everywhere on all my metal and um, that's what I want I want it to look all sort of you know real not perfect uh, so I'm happy with that they, they've all turned out really good uh, I didn't do anything with the wipers or the mirrors for now because I'm going to see how much washing I'm going to do to the body and I might um, even attach those and lightly wash them in place. But they will go on very much to the end. I've already managed to break my mirrors a couple of times while I was basically painting them and doing things. So yeah, my, um, my fumbling fingers will leave little things like that right to the end and then I'll very gently wash them when I do everything else. But my tools and my rings and you know my things i'm pretty happy with those i reckon they don't look half bad at all with a snarly amount of decal on now and german cross the schlepper looks almost complete and we are getting very close to the end but i've still got another set of track links to weather so i'll show you how i did those shortly and i've also created this so so um, I can remove the top and then if I'm just working on the body or if I want to have a look at the interior detail because I still may add some more things to the inside I'm not sure and I'm still sort of toying up with how much weathering I will do on that I'm not going to make that decision until actually after I've finished those track links cemented all the wheels in put on the clear coat and then finally I can remove these um, masks because you never want to make the mistake of putting the flat clear coat on while you've got clear plastic showing because it goes crazed and horrible. Um, especially if you've got an aircraft, it absolutely ruins it. So the masks come off after the flat coat. So next we're going to do these track links and I'm going to match them up so they basically have the same effect that I've done on those. And despite having all these washers out here and all this terrific stuff, I actually did it very old school and just used paint. Here we have my track links, and this is what I'm aiming for. So I've just got them shot as a reference, really. Um, normally I would do both sets at the same time, and then you do exactly the same method. Uh, I've got to remember exactly what I did. Now I know that I stuck to a colour palette, and I tend to do this when I'm building something, is if I can stick to similar colours all the way through, it gives the model a nice artistic look because you're sticking to that colour palette. So I've got a, a tan here that I've been using on some of the tools as a bit of dry brushing for a light colour, and I've got um, a signal brown here that I've been using on the tools basically as the dark wood colour. So I'm already using those two for the wood. So I'm sneaking them in here as the mud, and the weathering on the track links because it actually continues a color palette. You don't have to do that, it's just my thing. And I'm also using gunmetal, which I've also used on the tools, and then I dry brush them with silver to do highlights. So I'll probably do the same here. I will gunmetal through and I might even touch up with a bit of silver if it's not bright enough because I think I did that on there. So essentially, I kind of stick with similar colors if I can. Um, it's just my thing. It's just an artistic thing from design. You kind of stick to a color palette. That decal is settling down really nicely. I'm so happy with it and the rivets are popping through so we won't disturb it and that's only put on there with mark fit which is terrific stuff. Look at that basque here. I tell you what, I'm going to have to really give this whole model a wipe down and a blow off before I put the clear coat on. Anyhow, to do the track links, right, I've primed them in Style Res Black which is a really nice satiny black colour and that's good because that's essentially given me all the dark recesses are nicely dark to start with. So 
I, I basically didn't even put a wash on these. No, because the dark was already on there and I'm going to show you how I lightly put on the muddy colours. Well, tarnishy muddy. Well, it's mud. This thing was in the river. Anyhow, um, basically, I will start with a dark and then go light, even though that's kind of the opposite to what you do. Um, but what I'm doing, that will work because the dark is going to disappear. The light, I want more sparingly and on top. So I've got a kind of a scrappy brush. This is one of my Hombro detail brushes. It's not one of my nice sable ones. And this one's a bit sort of scrappy and I use it for doing things like dry brushing and, um, and, and, and anything like this where I'm poking and prodding and I don't really care too much for the bristles. In fact, I've ended up cutting the bristles. They got kind of snapped. So a little bit of paint. You don't want much. And in fact, off, off camera, I'm nearly going to do a dry brush thing. I've taken a bit of that off. So... I now would just pick areas randomly. And notice I'm supporting my track links with my fingers because if I push down on them, I might snap this loop. So basically just picking areas here, there. I'm not painting the whole thing. And I'm not pushing down too hard. I'm trying to leave the black in there. Okay, so I try not to be too even about it. Remembering the, um, the gun metal and the silver are going to go over the top of where the basically those link edges bang on things and wear. So I've really got to get this kind of in between. Okay, so got a bit, haven't got enough on the front there. All I'm doing off camera is I'm just basically dabbing the worst of the paint off my brush so it's not really wet, a bit wet that time. Okay, so we've done that. And you'll notice already as the brown's drying, it's almost disappearing. Almost disappearing to that black. Because I'm only going to put one coat on. All right, so next I uh, clean my brush. I've got some water off camera. Give my brush a bit of a clean. And then I'm going to switch to the lighter colour. Now acrylics being what they are, especially life colour here with a day that's in the high 20s for me. So whatever that is for your Frankenfurter, but it's high 20s for me. It's quite warm today. So things here are going to dry fairly quickly. All right, I've got the light colour now, and um, I'm using the lid only because this isn't proper painting. We are splodging. So again, a bit of paint, and then I'm using just a little cloth here to get the worst of it off. So it's I'm almost dry brushing, almost. Now, this will be seen more. So I'm trying to find areas I haven't been and just wherever, whatever. Now it gets attracted to the um, those edges, which as I said, they're going to be silver, but that doesn't matter. Okay. So that's on already and I'll give you a bit of a close-up look so you can see what's going on here. Just getting a little bit of a random motley pattern of dark and light browns. Now the reason I'm using two colours is you get more interest visually if you use different two different colours. So um, it's like if you do a mud effect, if you do it all one colour that's not realistic. You know, thing, things usually have different shades, different colours. So okay, so that's um, that's not too bad there. I could probably go heavier, but for the purpose of this demonstration, uh, I'm just going to show you very quickly. Now, in the time that we have talked, that is dry. Well, dry enough what I want to do next. So we're literally doing this process in real time. We don't have to sit around waiting for hours, because these are life color acrylics, and they dry nice and fast. Especially once I've turned the air conditioner off in here, and the temperature is now soaring into the 30s. So, gunmetal on my brush. Far too much and wipe it just about all off. Now I sort of do a bit of a wet dry brush here. It's still a little bit wet. Now going sideways, I just want to get the tips. By going sideways, I'm not digging into those recesses now. 
Oops, everything's sliding around here, Harry. I'm just trying to get the top of those links where they would bang on things. I carry it any bangs on all the time. Okay, now there's one side that is going to be seen, and for this set of links, the side that's going to be seen is um, basically on the side because it'll be on the side. So flipping this over, what I want to do now is with a fairly wet brush is I want to run along all those little the um, little fasteners or bolts for the track links and they will be weathered and worn and they will show the middle and also they look cool once you basically do them now still with my brush fairly wet still it's not um, not fully dry brush I want to also see those guide horns so I'm just rubbing over the top and that should leave okay so I've done this very quickly and on camera I'm just giving you a rough idea of how I accomplish it so can you see what I can see see my guide horns and then my all my little nuts and bolts here and then my track links have got some silverness but they've also got a mottleness of colour in there. Now I'm going to add mud and a few other things later on but that's already built up a patina that I'm quite happy with. They certainly look a lot more realistic than that. Okay so that's boring. That's nice. All right well I will continue on now and I will do a much nicer job of the rest of these links because I've also got to do inside. The inside edges have all got to be done and, um, and I need to take special attention to the front and the rear because there they'll, they'll really get seen. Like this is pretty well hidden that's why I did this one on camera because even if I botched it up it's hidden under here you don't really see much of it. But um, and the bottom too you won't really see much of that unless you lift the thing up. But the front and the back is where you want to hone your skills and work your method out and then you really get uh, effect you want there. All right, I'll continue on. It's taken me about 10 minutes, but those um, links are all fully weathered and affected inside and out. And I've got a matching effect to the other side so they're going to look very nice once they go in there now one thing you have to watch out for be very careful these things is where the sprockets go in be very careful especially at the front in this case where you've got to actually get those little sprocket things in the, the holes um, you know I fill those up with paint because then you'll have a terrible time later on so I went very sparingly um, around where the sprockets are going to go in, especially hardly any paint on the inside at all. I did fill up some of the trenches here with a little bit of the gun metal to show that's worn. And I really only put the silver effect on this facing side for the guide horns. See, on that side I didn't really bother because you won't see it. Hard to be there. And if we do see a little bit sticking out at the end, I'll be able to poke the brush in and, uh, and do that. So... You've got to put your sprocket in to get started. So that's the first thing, is putting these on. Now, often I don't show this. Often, miraculously, my track links are back on the vehicle. Now, you could glue them on at this stage, but I'll probably still be faddling because I've done this on the video. I might still take it off and go, oh, I need to adjust that. And I can. So that's on. All right. The back wheel, you could put that on when you did the front one, but... Um, so I'm going to call this one the idler. So into the this is a bit fiddly. Into the links. And then now I've also got the advantage here that I've still got 
some My Liquid Tape. My Liquid Tape is still on there and it's still effective. And that stuff makes your life so much easier when you're doing things like this. Because that liquid tape is holding everything. Even these little return rollers here, they're, um, they're just holding the liquid tape. Nothing has been glued in. This gives me fiddle time and faff around time until I'm absolutely sure that's what I want, everything's fitting, and then I'll just peel off the liquid tape and um, I can do the final glue. So again, I just hold in with liquid tape. And see, you've got a bit of elasticity with your track links. Oh, listen to that wind outside. It is stinking hot. We have massive fires burning in the middle of Queensland. Record temperatures well into the 40s. Entire section of the country has been declared a disaster zone. Um, we're getting at the edge of it here, but no near. No way are we suffering as much as they are there. So there you go. Look, that's it. And again, my sticky stuff, there's no glue. Nothing's held on with glue. So there's that side. And there's that side. Okay, so they should look yeah, not too bad. I've probably got a bit more silver on my, um, my tracks over there on the right. But that's okay. I might add a bit more drone brushing over there because I kind of like the way they've turned out. But that is it. As easy as that. So that's how I will paint my track links off the vehicle and then put them on. Because I know... I've been asked about that so many times because people go, yeah, but how do you do it? Well, hopefully in the video series for this vehicle, I've shown that method. And I'll probably cut bits of this out and put it into a short how I do so you can easily reference it if you ever need it. Okay, now it's time to assemble, put a flat coat on this, and the last few bits go on and a little bit of weathering. Oh, and the bumpers. That's going to be fun. We'll put the bumpers on. Started putting the mud on this, and I have recorded that um, part of the video, but we're already at half an hour. I've waffled on for half an hour. That's long enough for one video. So I'll save doing the mud and then getting on with the rest of the weathering and all the final effects, including adding the bumpers, for the next video. Won't that be exciting? Yes, that's worth waiting for. But I think you must agree with me. The schlepper is really looking quite schleppery now. Yes. Very, very happy with it. One thing I lucked out with is the um, little decals here for the snarly mouth, right? This little grey section here, that's actually a solid colour of the decal. Whereas that grey section there is see-through. And lo and behold, the see-through to the colour I painted and the colour that's blocked in on the decal are the same. I actually winged it because I only sort of guessed my colour and I put a lot of shades on and, you know, I'd mucked around with, with pre-shading or anything. And it actually came out looking spot on so pretty pretty happy about that it's one of those times where i've messed about and bugged around with it and it actually worked <laughs> anyhow look this is long enough for this video i've got lots more to show you how i can get all that mud happening and there'll be a lot more mud on it the bumpers and final tiny little pieces that need to go on and then it's finished sorry um, that's it one more video and we're done so that's it for now it's goodbye from australia and it's huru from harry Denny.